Hey everyone, and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. Between the 10th and 12th of July, I joined forces with Jonas and Jan to take part in the fourth Game Maker's Toolkit Jam, hosted by the awesome YouTuber Mark Brown. The goal was simple but challenging, create a game in under 48 hours based on the theme out of control. This was my third time taking part in the GMZK Jam. In 2018, I created The Link, a minimalist top-down shooter where you control two squishy characters. In 2019, I made my first game with Jonas called Life is Snot, where you play a creature, a snot, that lives for only one minute. I felt ready and excited to take part in the 2020 edition. With around 15,000 participants, this was the biggest online game jam to have ever taken place. Since I'm creating Dashing Fire, my second commercial game completely solo, working in a team is extremely enjoyable and refreshing. And what a cool team I jumped into. Our team structure for the jam was more or less like this. I would be in charge of making art and animations. Jonas would be the main programmer and Jan would do additional programming, sounds, and music. But we would all be free to pitch in on other things than our main tasks, if need be, and we all contributed to the game design and story. When the theme Out of Control was announced at 9pm, we began brainstorming in Miro, doodling weird ideas and rules and worlds. Congratulations to you if you can understand half of what's going on here. I'll do a quick recap of our main ideas though. First of all, we had the idea that you needed to tame a vicious monster who's completely out of control. Or since I'm a massive fan of card games and Jonas recently got into Monster Train, perhaps we could create a card game. Nothing really concrete came to mind though. I also had a vision of being a mighty monarch controlling a cute wobbly army. You control this army and make decisions, except like in XCOM or Darkest Dungeons, certain events may lead your army to panic, disobey orders, deserts or revolt against you. In short, your army could potentially get out of control, which would stick nicely with the theme of the jam. But what we ultimately decided to work on was based on an idea from Yan, who having worked in a nursery in the past, felt greatly inspired to create a chaotic game set in a universe filled with crazy little kids. Yelling, cursing, fighting, pooping and setting fires, and you would play as the poor teacher struggling to keep things under control. We called it a night by then. I have a summer night routine at the moment where I just lie down and look at the stars. So that's what I did after all the brainstorming, relaxing and getting ready for a hectic but fun game dev weekend. Around 8.30 on Saturday morning, I made some content arts to illustrate our idea from the night before. This helps get me motivated, warmed up, and hopefully inspires the team a little as well. We started at the healthy hour of 10am. We were going to use the Unity game engine as usual, and the project had already been set up. So Jonas and Yang got busy programming the kids' AI and the teacher's movements while I began making some art. Since there would be a ton of kids in the nursery, it was a good idea to randomly generate them. So I made a bunch of hairs, heads, mouths and bodies. And then a script would randomly cobble these things together. This results in a bunch of extremely wacky boys and girls, if you can even call them that. I also made some simple environment arts, trees and clouds, and some texture to the grass, as well as a balding teacher who's in for the time of his life. If you've watched some previous game jam making of videos from me, you'll know I use Unity Collab to work with others. Most of the time it's very smooth and enjoyable to use. When you stop to think about it, it's quite amazing how three devs from different parts of the world can create a game together over a weekend. What was also awesome is despite having never worked with Yen and having created only two small games with Jonas in the past, throughout the weekend we formed a kick-ass team. Their passion and dedication to the project was of course very motivating and encouraged me to keep going even when a lengthy afternoon siesta or a complete morning in the swimming pool was more than tempting. I took small breaks of course which are 100% necessary but all in all we made steady progress, the world's coming to life, Although the lack of a clear game loop and the fact that the experience wasn't even close to fun after about 6-7 to seven hours of development was a little concerning. Having tons of kids wreaking havoc was of course quite an ambitious idea and not necessarily very easy to quickly prototype. Making classrooms, play areas and trees took time, so Jonas and Yan did a lot of the heavy lifting around the end of Saturday, figuring out how to get kids fighting each other and programming interactions between the teacher and his mad pupils. Grabbing children with space and throwing them around 
was a fun way to calm the crying horde of squishy children, or dispersing fights in the toilets. Little bubbles over their heads made their intentions clear and readable to the player. Anyway, the strict time constraints imposed by this gem got me making simple art. And as usual, it's the combination of each little piece and sprite that makes for an interesting world. So here I am talking about art, but there's a whole other side to the development of this project, and I urge you to check out Jonas's behind the scenes video after finishing this one, which has just come out now on his own channel. With that said, end of day one sees me exhausted and happy, looking at the stars again and making a list of what needs to be done next. On Sunday morning, I began by making a title screen. Jan came up with the cool name Nursery Curse, and worked on music for the project. This is a soundtrack that would change over time as the kids grew increasingly out of control. He made a cheerful, quirky piece of music that goes brilliantly with the Nursery Curse experience. And by adding various filters to it, by the end of the day, it's a manic, edgy soundscape that mimics the teacher's distress and eagerness for the day to come to an end. I created an animation featuring the poor teacher, which we later named Mark, being squashed by three grinning children. Much of the day was then spent joining the rooms to form one nursery structure, and not just floating around the playgrounds. I added little stairs and corridors and bricks between the cracks as well. Meanwhile, Jonas tirelessly worked on a score system that counts how many punches are thrown and children knocked unconscious. He made children spawn gradually throughout the day, so the complete, out-of-control feeling gradually creeps up on Mark. And of course, our little game jam experiment is really brought to life with all the incredible sound design work Jan put in. Each child can say hello, scream, and cry. Jonas and I would do a lot of spluttering in the mic, and Jan would add that to his vast sound effects collection, do some editing and audacity, cast a magic spell or two, and what we end up with is a realistic sounding hell full of flushing toilets, cries of anguish, and squeaky war cries from fighting kids. <laughs> And of course, you can follow Yan on Twitter to keep up to date with the cool projects he's working on. I could go on about the frightening last minute bugs, or how the visual polish I did on the end score screen was lost, or perhaps how Jonas's sanity seems to deteriorate throughout the jam as he took on the role of Mad Little Kids. But all that pales in comparison to the relief and creative pump I felt hitting the publish button on itch.io a few minutes before the jam deadline we had created a crazy nursery simulator. We got a great response from the game jamming community, and most importantly, I take away some great memories working with Jonas and Yan. We made this in two days. Imagine what horrors we would bring to life if given a little more time. Okay, thanks so much for watching this little game jam behind the scenes video. Consider checking out Jonas's version of the events, and of course the link to play Nursery Curse is in the description. And if you're interested in making your own games, then my brother and I have four Udemy courses which you can buy with the links in the description. Each one teaches you how to make a certain game, such as a turn-by-turn -turn strategy battle or a top-down shooter. A few days ago, we launched a classic platformer course, which should arm you with the fundamental tools to make the next Ori and Hollow Knight. Okay, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more game dev tutorials and dev vlogs. Cheers.